How are we all doing this morning? Great. <laughs> so I'm very thankful that I get the opportunity for the first time to be a worship leader. And this is an awesome feeling. Something that I've been wanting to do, but we have to wait on God's timing. And his timing is the best timing. So um, I'm going to start off with how the devil was trying to work on me not to be here this morning. Yesterday evening, I was home sitting on the back of my truck just, just enjoying the weather, looking at the trees. And Erica was cleaning up. She put the mat outside. And I don't know why I got to go look at the mat. Like, I got to wash it or whatever. But it's two steps to get, to get in the house. I climb up the two steps. The next thing I know, I'm backpedaling. Boom, I'm on back. Hit my toe. So I'm kind of happy, but it's all good. I'm thankful to be here. This morning, um, as I was leaving my house, for the past two months, my house has been crazy. I've been, my kids and his family there. I was getting out of the house. My two-year-old grandson sneaked behind me. Boom, the same place I fell yesterday, same place he fell. He hit his head on the rock. He just sits there. I'm like, <laughs> so I went back in because I went to get my knee brace. I bring him inside, went inside, put my brace on. I'm coming out. Erica, like, KK vomit up in the car. So my five year old granddaughter. She don't want to come to church today because her cousin is there, older cousin is there. So she got in the car. Boom, in the car. See how the devil working? But guess what? I'm here. I'm thankful. Very thankful to be here. So the question is, what are you thankful for today? What are y'all thankful for today? Um, it's so much to be thankful for so much. Today is Palm Sunday, going up to his resurrection. And it's just so much to be thankful for. The simple things like just have a bed to get out of this morning. Running water. You step off that bed. Did you step in dirt? Or concrete? Cold? So it's just so much to be thankful for. So as we go through this Holy Week, just look at the little things. Let it lead up to the big things. Of the price he paid for us. The price he paid for us. So let's be thankful. So I guess I can call today Thankful Sunday. It's Palm Sunday. But thankful Sunday. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just so awesome to be in the house. And thank you all for coming out, the ones online. We just want to thank you. So with that being said, we're going to have our brother Albert come and pray for us. Lead up us in prayer. Then we have praise and worship minister to us. And our brother dear will read the scripture. and sisters. As he said, uh, today is Palm Sunday, and um, we just got to take some remembrance that um, this was the week that Jesus went through to leading up to his death, burial, and resurrection. Um, I'm very thankful to God for thinking of us at this time and being ready to give his, life, his son's life so that we can live abundantly. So saying that, I just want to go before the throne of grace. Father God, we just want to thank you for who you are today, Lord, for what you are in our lives, God. God, I just want to thank you for leaving, leading us to this place in this time, Lord, to hear a word from you today, God. Father God, I ask that you bless those who are on their way, Lord, 
You bless the members here, Lord. And you bless those who were not able to make it today, Lord. Father God, we ask that you heal today. We ask that you bring clarity to our minds today, Lord. We ask that you take out all distraction, Lord, so that we can just concentrate on you. At this time, Lord, we just stand before you, bare and unashamed, Lord. You are God. You are holy. We thank you for Jesus Christ who died on the cross for our sins, God. We were born in sin and shaped in iniquity, Lord, but you saw fit to bless us. We may feel unworthy, God, but you have called us worthy, Lord. So we thank you, God. Father God, we lay ourselves before your feet right now. Have your will, have your way in this place. Let the Holy Spirit lead. Let the Holy Spirit move through this place, God. Let us be on one accord, Lord. And we pray for the bigger body of, of Christ, Lord, that we all come together, not trying to have our own agendas, God, but to just seek your face and have your agenda for us, Lord. God, I thank you right now, Lord, that we are in a time of caring for our community, Lord, that, that we're raising up more leaders, God, that we're inviting people to church, that we're doing the things that we're supposed to do to impact this community and our world, God. Father God, I pray for the children, Lord, that they see what we're doing, Lord, as adults and shape their lives in accordance with you, God. Father God, have them to be leaders in their schools, Lord. Have them to make change in this world, Lord, so that these gun laws and, and, and the, the killings and murders, Lord, that, that they just slow down and stop, God. Father God, we pray for our nation, God. We pray for all nations, God, that we can finally see eye to eye, that we grow in love and not in hate, God. But we have to start right here at home, Father. That, Lord, we just thank you. We thank you. And we thank you, God. And it's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. Um, you know, just in line with what Mike was saying, this song we're going to sing is called Open the Eyes of My Heart. And your, his eyes are open because he's, he's, he's had a, a rough couple months, he said, a rough couple of days, but he's able to see things through the eyes of Christ. Amen? Because that's how you can be thankful when things are not going our way. And um, I'm sure we're all in that boat where life is throwing things at us. We're trying to dodge them. Some of them are, some of them are not missing. But praise the Lord, we're still here, we're still standing, and we're going to just keep pushing forward in our faith. Amen? Amen. So just, you know, worship with us as we sing, Open the Eyes of My Heart. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. to see. 
start reading. The disciples went ahead and, and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the coat and put on their cloaks and he sat on them. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blesses he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up, saying, Who is this? And the crowd said, This is the prophet Jesus of, from Naz Nazareth of Galilee. That's who we serve, y'all. Thank you. Okay, church. So, like I said, I was, um, it was my first time. But look, I'm back again. <laughs> Second time in one day. <laughs> Guess I'm getting used to it already. <laughs> Pastor, don't, don't, don't listen to that. <laughs> we know him, right? <laughs> um, so, who ready to spread some love? Who ready to get some love? Yeah. All right, all right. So this is what we're gonna do. Um, we're gonna just 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 cheer some love. But after that, Pastor gonna come with the announcement. Prison works gonna minister to get, minister to us again, and 
then we'll get the word. So for right now, like Pastor said, three minutes. <laughs> three minutes. Once the light goes off, that's it. All right? Three minutes. So let's do this. Don't act like you don't see that clock. Y'all know how to tell time. Look, we're going to have a stampede, people trying to get back to their seats. <laughs> Ain't that something with me? <laughs> that right. Oh, now you want four minutes. The same people be complaining about, we get out of church too late. <laughs> no, I'm just messing. Don't nobody say that. I'm just messing. Uh, We are are so grateful uh, for everybody coming out today, uh, being in church. Um, Let's give, let's shout my man Mike out. Didn't do a fantastic job on his first, his his first day as worship leader. He he made sure he he put that disclaimer out because he know I'll have him right back up here next week (laughs) doing it again. But no, we are so grateful. For people using their gifts, uh, their talents, their abilities, and stepping out on faith. We like to say, if you're afraid, do it what? Afraid. Do it afraid. God will show up. Amen. Amen. And God showed up. He was speaking through my brother just uh, through that whole concept of being thankful. And I'm, I'm just thankful for what God is doing. Really quickly, I want to um, welcome any first-time guests. If we have any first-timers here at BBCC, you've never been here before, uh, would you do me a favor and just raise your hand so that we can see you and, and acknowledge you? I got one over here. Keep it held high so we can see you. Amen. God bless you, bro. We are so glad that you are with us today. 
Uh, you should have gotten a little orange card that says, I'm a guest. All right, perfect. So for everybody who doesn't know, this is Dion's brother. Yeah, this is his brother. So Marcus, so oh, we got a few Marcuses in the house. So Marcus, welcome. We're so glad you came today. Uh, it's not an accident that you're here this morning. Um, I want you to do me a favor and grab that orange card, fill it out, bring it to me at the end of service, and I have a gift that I want to give you. And I want to just kind of meet with you for a few minutes just to show some love to you and thank you for coming out. Amen. All right, so mama was here last Sunday, uh, brother here today. Uh, we're going to find out everything about Dion, y'all, for it's all over. We're going to know about everything. <laughs> but uh, it's just so good to be in church again. Today is our first day with, ma- with optional masks, uh, and I've seen some faces that I, you know, I'm like, oh, that's what you look like. <laughs> y'all know what I look like, but no, because I've been, but no, we're just so grateful uh, that, that God is bringing us into a new season. And uh, I want to uh, quickly just uh, recognize a few birthdays that we had on this past week. Um, I know Pat had a birthday, um, so we want to wish her a a happy birthday. Amen. And then also one of my favorite young men in the world, Mr. Caden, they call him K-Beast, had a birthday. Is Is this the big, is this 11? Oh, my man is 11. I asked him if he got a job application lined up yet. But we are so grateful for, for, for both Pat and Kaden uh, celebrating birthdays this week. If there's anybody else that we didn't recognize, charge it to the head and not the heart. Uh, if we miss you and you, you, you're not listed, happy birthday. Amen. We want to love on you, let you know that we appreciate you. Uh, we will be having uh, refreshments after service. Our, one of our traditions is First Sunday Fellowship Meal. So today we will have communion. And then we will also have food in the back after service, right? So uh, we put the special fr- uh, free seasoning. Uh, it's really good. It's gluten-free. Uh, it's, it's low calorie, but it's full of taste, right? So I want you all to come out, worship with us, fellowship with us. Let's get to know one another better. Let's share the love of Christ uh, right after church today. And, uh, and we will acknowledge all of our birthdays as well. I want to give you an update on the invite challenge. Um, so... Uh, we had a, 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 a comp- we have an ongoing competition for who can invite the number the maximum number of people to church, and we want to shout out the the expand small group because they were the winner in the month of March uh, by a landslide. They they, they wore E squared. E squared dominated the previous month. Expand got it this month, so we want to shout out Expand uh, for their hard work. Uh, we didn't quite meet our goal last month, which is the first time, but we know that we are being intentional in this area, right? And we are seeing the fruit of that, right? So uh, I want to recognize the individual winners as well. So I want to call up um, my mama, Ms. Stephanie. Yeah, come, come on up here. So, so, so she, she was the leading... Uh, adult inviter. Uh, it was some posts in there with five people, four people. Y'all, they was, Expand was not playing last month. They, they took it personally that they did not win the previous month. But uh, I want to bless you with this uh, $25 Amazon gift card oh, thank to you, thank you. Hey, I love you. Thank you. <laughs> and you, you know, you, you, you know if, if, if your mama supports you, you're doing something. Amen. <laughs> But now we want to shout her out. But then also we want to bring up our youth as well. We had two young people who invited folks to church on last month. So we're going to call them up uh, and bless them as well. So uh, Tasi, can you come on up here? And then Melina, I'm not sure if she is here today. Come on up. Uh, we got some, want to be a blessing to y'all. So we got a DQ gift card for you. And you want to donate this back to me, right? You want to give me that? <laughs> yeah, I got to know what I'm working with. Uh, but, but no, we want to praise God for both of you inviting people to church. Tossie's been over at Cooper just inviting people like crazy. And one of her classmates came uh, a few weeks ago. And we just want to praise God for you. For y'all leading the way and showing us how it's done. Amen. So appreciate y'all. If you do want to bless pastor with a blizzard, then it's okay. We can do that, right? All right. Appreciate you. I ain't seeing no kind of amens on that one. (laughs) 
All right. Also, also, you all know that, that on uh, last Wednesday we got together and we packed our blessings bags. I want to thank everybody who came out uh, to help. We've had a big, huge assembly line. That's actually a picture of it. Uh, you saw everybody was there. Um, nobody got choked out. Nobody got body slammed. We worked together. We were on one accord, and we got it done. We packed 100 bags. Amen. Amen. We packed 100 bags. And now that we got them packed, here's where the work begins, right? So the whole purpose of us packing those bags is so that we can be the hands and feet of Jesus. Uh, as you see homeless uh, people out in the community, we want to actually go and give them these bags. These bags have things that they need. They've got toiletries in them. They've got some, uh, some level of food in them, uh, hand warmers, mouthwash, all the kind of stuff that they can need and benefit from, right? And we do that because we want to be a blessing and be an encouragement. Uh, but sometimes when you give out money, you don't know where that money is going to go, right? So we want to make sure that we are being a tangible blessing to our community. Um, so those bags are actually in the foyer. Uh, right now, there's a men's bag and a woman's bag, so we have two different packets. Uh, we want everybody to grab at least three bags, right, and then give those bags out. Don't have that bag sitting in your car for two years, right? And, and then after a while, you're like, maybe I ought to just use the stuff myself. <laughs> that mouthwash is going to go bad after a while, and that granola bar is going to go bad after a while, right? So don't eat that. You wonder why you got this, your stomach bubbling. But we want you to give that thing out uh, to the homeless uh, out in the community. Make sure you grab a bag today. Uh, we want to be the hands and feet of Jesus, right? So thank you all for that. But this is a part of our outreach to our community. Uh, we're not just, this is, our church is not just about what's going on inside these walls. The ministry is out there. Uh, on next Saturday, next Saturday, we are going to have our spring fling, right? And the whole purpose of this is that we want to invite our community to come out to worship with us on Resurrection Sunday. So next Saturday from 2 to 4 p.m., we will be right outside in the parking lot. We're going to be handing out invite cards. Uh, we're going to have a little bit of music playing. We're going to just be a blessing, right? So we got Sweet Frog is coming. We're going to be giving out a free Sweet Frog on next Saturday, 2 to 4. I want as many people as possible to come out, even if you can only be out there for 30 minutes. We will hook you up with some ice cream or frozen yogurt or whatever that stuff is. Uh, but we want you to be there, and we want to bless our community and let them know that BVCC is here. Hey Amen. Can I count on, you, on somebody to be there? Other than my mama. I know my mama coming, but I want to make sure somebody else is out there. <laughs> uh, also, also, we are looking for volunteers for our audio video ministry. Um, we're looking for folks to learn the soundboard, people to help with the video presentation, and folks to help operate and run the camera. So if you are gifted in those areas, feel called in those areas, or just willing to lend your time and your talents, please see Craig and Carolyn uh, as we are trying to expand out that ministry. Uh, we know that uh, Sade and, and Karis, they do a lot of stuff in the video section, and they're going to be going off to school before we know it, right? So we want to make sure that we are uh, backfilling that. We want to make sure we got plenty of uh, people who are working in that area. So we are challenging everyone to grow in their gifts, right? Use your time, your talent, and your treasures. But if this is a ministry that you want to be a part of, make sure you see Craig and Carolyn. If you don't know who they are, Craig and Carolyn, just raise your hand so they can see you real quick. All right, so see, see one of them, and uh, we will get you, get you uh, set up. On uh, April 16th, on April 16th, we are having a financial stewardship seminar. This is going to be uh, something that we're doing for the body to uh, assist you with planning out your finances, to assist you in being a good steward of what God has given you. And we do have a survey, right? And that survey, we are trying to go in and target it to the areas that you need, that you are going to be blessed from. So there's a QR code right there. So if you haven't taken a survey, what I want you to do is pull out your phone, scan that guy right there. It's two questions, and I want you to do the survey, right? So just take a second. If you have not, scan that. Uh, yeah, we're getting, we getting better. Yeah, we're getting high tech. Scan that. Take the survey real quick, and, uh, and, and so, we can, so we can plan out the seminar. But on April 16th, Right after service, we are going to be right here in the sanctuary going over the seminar materials. It will probably be about 45 minutes or so, uh, and we're going to go over some of those tools. All right, I will give all the folks who don't know how to operate their phones a few more seconds. Uh, I don't know. I'm not going to say Team Android or Team iPhone or none of that. I do not want to start a riot in here. Uh, but we'll give you all a few more seconds, and then we're going to jump to the, to the next one. All right. Last but not least, my last announcement before I take my seat is there will be no small groups this week. We are going to be on sabbatical. Uh, this is spring break for the kids, so we move sabbatical up a week to coincide with spring break. Uh, so make sure you're taking some time to get some rest, 
Make sure you take some time to spend with family. I know folks will be traveling, all that kind of stuff, but there will be no small groups this week. With that being said, we're going to bring up the praise and worship team again. Uh, have them worship. Um, May, you threw me off because I was like, oh, is May singing today? Uh, <laughs> she's like, I am pastor. I am not the one. Amen. <laughs> praise and worship team, come on back up and lead us in praise and worship. We have an extra mic over there for you. <laughs> so it seems like, of course, everybody is going through something, it seems like. You know, uh, the devil is busy. He is so busy in our households, at our jobs, you know, in our health, our finances, whatever. However, we have a father. He wants us to draw close to him, and he wants to draw close to us. So, like, the closer we draw to him, the closer he draws to us. He is there for us, y'all. Yes. He will help us through any and every situation, but we just have to get in his presence. We just need to give it to him and not to hold that little string. We just need to give it to him. God, this is your problem. Yeah. You made this person. Good. He's your problem. <laughs> She's your problem. You gave me this kid. She's your problem. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you gave me the job. Whatever it is. But in order for us to give it to him, we got to draw close, guys. Okay? We got to draw close. All right? So sing this song with us. Draw me Thank close you. to you. Draw me close to you. Let me go
Let's just stay in that moment just for a second while you're still in worship. Let's, that song says, draw me nearer. God, there are so many things that are trying to draw us away from you. But today, God, draw us nearer. God, we don't always know how to draw near. Pull us. When we are distracted, draw us near. When we are discouraged, draw us near. When we are anxious, draw us near. In the midst of our fears, God, draw us near. Remind us that you are a good, good father. Remind us that you'll never leave us nor forsake us. Remind us that even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, that we don't have to fear any evil because your rod and your staff, they comfort us. Draw us nearer. God, that when the midst of the fear surround us with your perfect love, because you said, Lord God, that in the midst of your love, Lord, all that fear is cast out. Wrap us in your loving arms today, God. We don't want to just draw near when the song is playing. But draw us near that the praise is forever on our lips. Draw us near that in the presence of God, we experience the fullness of joy. Draw us near, God, that we can taste and see that the Lord is good. Draw us near today, God, that the cares of this world will grow strangely dim. Draw us near that we trust you and believe you to be God. Draw us near that we would walk in the identity and the purpose that you have for our lives. Draw us near. God, in this moment, give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and hands to do the works of the Lord. God, many of us are coming to you today and we've got doubts. But Lord, just like they prayed, Lord, help our unbelief. Father God, we recognize that you are the creator of the heavens and the earth. We recognize that you are King of kings and Lord of lords, and we lift up your name. God, we have worshiped today. We have fellowship today. And now, God, we are hungry for the word of God. I pray that you will speak to our hearts. Lord God, allow us, Father God, to hear directly from you. I pray that you would hide me and reveal yourself that men and women and children would know the true and living God. Father, we bless you and we thank you. Speak now for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You, you may be uh, seated. We're going to get ready to uh, jump in uh, to the Word uh, this morning. Hopefully everyone has your, your handouts, your fill-in sheets. Uh, we're going to uh, be in the midst of a, a mini-series today. We're doing a mini-series for the next two Sundays. We're going to talk about resurrection. We're marching towards Resurrection Sunday. Uh, and then after that, we're going to be talking about discipleship and the phases of growth. We're going to really dig into that concept of what it means to grow spiritually. But I, I want to tie that into uh, today's message as well. And, and I want to give you, you know, today is Palm Sunday. And on Sunday, today, days like today, I kind of miss uh, Sister Fanny because she was our traditional uh, church mother who would make sure we had all that stuff. She would have been right out there with the palm branches and y'all be getting stuck on the way in, uh, making sure we didn't draw blood. But, but, but today we are talking about Palm Sunday. Y'all remember back in the day where you had to put those on uh, and, and we would have Easter Sunday the following week. But today we're talking uh, and I want to introduce the subject of the king is here. The king is here. And we're talking about the triumphal entry of Jesus uh, and, and, and how everyone reacted to that. 
And, and we know, you know, today is a, is, is a, a day where we have transitioned, uh, we pulled masks off, made them optional, uh, and we are in the midst of springtime, right? And, and everyone knows when spring is here, we start to get excited, right? It starts to warm up outside. Uh, you know, folks start to lose their mind with what they wear. Uh, but, 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 but springtime is an exciting time. You know, around here, we, we get to all different levels of spring. You know, sometimes it might revert back, backslide and go back to winter. Uh, but our area for spring, for spring, sometimes uh, we get what we call allergy season, don't we, don't we? And, and y'all just know everything turned yellow. It's almost no point of washing a vehicle right about now, is it? You just pray for rain. Yeah, some people get excited, but some of y'all are like, oh boy, me and Benadryl are going to be hanging out uh, for a while. Uh, but, but, but on top of that, right, we're talking about Palm Sunday here today. And, and, and all of y'all who grew up, anybody, anybody grow up Baptist? Anybody uh, old school Baptist folks? Okay, it's a lot of us in, in the house. And we knew, we knew that when, when Resurrection Sunday came around, uh, there was a lot going on, wasn't it? You're going to get that Easter suit, right? Y'all remember them pants that you had to have the cuff on the bottom of it? Uh, ladies, y'all had to have the really tight curls. Uh, and, and, and Easter Sunday represented... A long day, didn't it? You, you was in there for a minute, right? It was going to be uh, refreshments after. Y'all remember that plate right there with the fried chicken, the green beans, and the pound cake? Y'all know that one, right? Y'all, y'all know that one. Uh, and sometimes church could be a hostage situation, right? You start at 11, and it might be dark before you got out. Right, y'all, y'all remember, some of y'all right now like having PTSD, thinking about resurrection next Sunday. Uh, but, but as we think about it, as we think about it, it is important as we approach resurrection season that we do not just go through the motions, right? We don't just go through the motions. You know, you're thinking about your Easter ham. You're thinking about p- pinning on the, the palm branches. You're thinking about all of these things when it comes to resurrection or Easter Sunday. It's important that we don't just go through the resurrection and, um, and, and miss the whole point. We've got to learn how to be intentional in our relationship with Christ. As we focus and approach this resurrection season, today we're talking about the triumphal entry. When Jesus came on the scene, everyone was excited. They, they were a big, huge crowd. But some of the same people who were shouting out, Hosanna! One day, we're crying out, crucify him another day. And we're going to be looking at this whole concept today. And we are here today in church. But if we are not intentional about our activities and our actions, we will go out sometimes the same way we came in. But today, I want you to focus on your relationship and your discipleship and don't lose sight of the fact that this is all about Jesus. It ain't about the styrofoam. It ain't about uh, the food we're going to serve later. It's not about what we're going to wear. It's all about Jesus and you. Am I making sense? Let me give you my bottom line. The bottom line is this. It says that God is calling us to be connected and to be committed and not just a part of the crowd. He wants us to be connected and committed and not just a part of the crowd. As we look at the text, it reads here in Matthew, it says, The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed him, directed them. He says, They brought the donkey and the colt and the colt and put on them their cloaks, and he sat on them. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. In other words, they rolled out the red carpet for Jesus. He says, in the crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up, saying, who is this? And the, and the crowd said, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. 
So this is the, what we call the triumphal entry. This is Jesus entering into Jerusalem, starting the Passion Week, walking towards his uh, crucifixion and his resurrection. But at the start of the week, Jesus comes in and he literally tells the disciples, he says, hey, look, I want you to go. You're going to find a colt and I want you to grab it. I want you to bring it and I'm going to ride it into the city. And as, he's, and as he comes in, right, the, the crowd starts shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna. Now, that word is a word of praise, but it literally means, please save us. It means, please save us. So, so people were looking for Jesus when they came aboard. They wanted him to rescue them from Roman oppression. See, so many people looked at, da- at, king, at, at, at Jesus as the second coming of King David. He was going to reestablish uh, Jerusalem or reestablish Israel as, uh, as the power that they used to be. So they're looking and they're saying, Hosanna, please save us. You're the one that we've been looking for this whole time. So as we look at it, though, I want to unpack the crowd for a few minutes. You see, in this crowd, in this crowd, there are people who were confused. In this crowd, there were people who were confused. As you look at the text, there were folks who literally were saying, who is this guy? Right? They got people looking around. Everybody's, man, he's coming in. He's on this this donkey. We laying down our coats. I don't know why my coat's getting messed up. You know, it's all muddy and dirty, but I'm doing it. Anyway, if, if, if all of a sudden I took off running, how many of y'all running with me? Everybody, pretty much everybody here. You don't know why you're running. You're just going to take off with me, right? Uh, some people just did it. They started shouting because everybody else was. They were confused as to who this man was. But then there were also critics. You see, because the religious folks, when you go over to John, you read John's account, and they're talking about, man, uh, this Jesus, everybody's following him. What else are we going to do? They were plotting to kill him. So you had the critics, and they're like, it don't take all of that. Why, why are these people doing this, right? You got critics in the midst of the crowd. But then there were the connected, literally the people who were looking, and they were saying, this is Jesus. This is the Messiah. He's come to die. I want to follow him. I'm not just here because everybody else is here. I'm not just here because it's popular. I'm not just shouting because everybody else is shouting, but I'm here for the Messiah. But then the question is for us today is who are you? You see, there's a crowd, and we all gather and come to church. We sing the songs. We eat the food, right? But the question for us today is who are you? You see, unless you are intentional, you'll just show up and leave out the same way you got here. Some of the people were confused, though, because they weren't looking for a savior for their souls. They were looking for a savior for their situation. You see, that's way different, y'all. And sometimes we seek Jesus because we just want a savior for our situation but not a savior for our souls. You see, in in the midst of Jesus coming, right, see, the champ is here. And and, and here, Jesus is going to, he comes into the city. The king is here. Y'all know what, y'all know, they start chanting, the champ is here. The champ is here, right? And and any of y'all who like to watch boxing, you know that before they get it on, right, they come in to to the arena, right, and they got their strut. And, and, and they got their theme music playing, and they show up, and everybody stands. But here is Jesus' moment. This is Jesus' moment to come into the city. You see, the king is here. But we look and we say, how did they react? You see, some praised him. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. But then some people were hating. Who is this? Who does this guy think he is? Oh, this is the prophet, the one from Nazareth. And you must understand about Nazareth is that Nazareth was a place, it was the hood. It was a place that nothing good was supposed to come out of. But here you got the Savior, uh, the the, the Savior of the world who's coming, and they're like, oh, he's from downtown Newport News? He's from Kannapolis? No, understand something. This is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. So some people were hating. But then there were some people, a lot of folks were just confused. I don't know why I'm here, but I'm here, and everybody else is shouting, so I might as well shout too. 
I, I might as well, everybody else is putting their jacket down. I might as well put mine down. But there are some folks that are like, no, Jesus, you're not getting uh, my Armani coat. You ain't getting my Gucci. You, no, I'm not putting my stuff down. I just paid good money for this. But there are some people who were confused. But then, but then the, the truth of the matter is that there were very few who knew Jesus' purpose. There were very few that knew his purpose. And the thing that we must understand is that when Jesus came, he came and he did the dirty work. He came to do the dirty work, the work that nobody else wanted to do. Jesus came to pay a debt. His whole purpose when he arrived, right, he's, there, he's like, I'm coming here to die. I'm coming here to pay your price. That is my purpose for arriving. And the one reason my sole agenda is a man born to die. See, the thing is, though, the thing is, though, y'all remember Peter. Peter's like, no, nah, you ain't doing that. No, nah, no, nah, Jesus, you, 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 I'm not going to let that happen. And what did Jesus say? He said, get behind me, Satan. Now, here's the thing I love. When you really start reading the Bible and start really understanding what's going on, see, a lot of people didn't want Jesus to die. A lot of people didn't understand it. But here's the thing I love, and I want to encourage you with this. Guess what? The devil didn't understand it any either. Let, 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 let us sink in for a minute. Let me unpack that. You see, the thing about it is that if the devil knew the reason that Jesus came to die, he wouldn't have been trying to kill him in the first place. You see, the devil started trying to kill Jesus from the moment he was born, but he didn't understand that Jesus came to die for our sins. So you must understand something. In order uh, for you and I to, to, to have a relationship with God, Jesus had to die. And we must understand that the enemy's activity is part of God's plan. The enemy literally has to go to God and ask for permission before he starts to do things in our lives. That encouraged me. But understand something is that we will be discouraged by Satan's activity when we don't understand God's sovereignty. So understand something. Jesus came and his whole purpose was to die. And if the devil understood that when Jesus died, it would give you access to, to God, he would have been trying to discourage Jesus from giving his life. But he didn't realize that he was actually part of the plan. And you and I have got to understand that some of the things that are going on are just a part of the plan. See, God can use everything. But the question for us, the question for us is why are you following Jesus? See yourself in that crowd for a few minutes. Just, just think about it. If I'm, if I'm in the crowd, where, who, who am I in this whole thing? Am I, am I one of the confused ones? Am I one of the ones that are just seeking him uh, with the hope of him delivering me from something? Am I just seeking him because I want him to do something for me? Am, am, am I just one of the religious people, right? Because all the religious folks had an issue. They didn't like Jesus healing on the wrong day. They didn't like Jesus doing uh, picking grain in the field. They didn't like a lot of stuff he did because it disrupted their tradition. So who are you in the crowd? Are you really seeking the Messiah? Because the king is here, but oftentimes you are going to get the thing you are looking for. And if you're looking for the wrong thing, you are going to miss God. See, we miss God when we seek him for the wrong reasons. When we only seek him for personal benefit, we miss God. When we only seek him because of our religion or our tradition, guess what? We miss God. Uh, and even if you only stop at the fact that Jesus died and bled for you, guess what? You'll miss God too. Some of y'all look at me like, wait, what? What does that mean? I want you to understand if all you are seeking is salvation from your sins from God, you're missing God. There's more to it than that. I'm going to unpack that here in a minute. See, I don't want you to stop at salvation. Don't stop at salvation. We've got to get connected and committed to discipleship. You see, too many believers stop once they say that prayer. Lord, I, I, I'm a sinner, and I need Jesus come into my heart, wash me clean. And we oftentimes look at our relationship with God as fire insurance. In other words, I just want to not go to hell. I want to say that prayer, and as long as I say that prayer, I'm good. 
But understand something that we must get connected and committed to discipleship if we are going to experience the fullness of God and everything he has for our lives. Many of us are living defeated. Many of us are living uh, struggling. Why? Because we haven't connected. We haven't committed. We are just stopping at the initial moment of salvation. Pastor, I joined the church. That was enough. What else do you want? God wants you to walk the walk that he designed for you. God wants you to discover your ministry purpose. He wants you to discover your spiritual gifts. He wants you to grow up. The Bible says to work out your salvation. Not work for it, but to work it out. Here's the thing. You see, our way alone won't make it. Our way won't make it. We need to grow as disciples. See, you see my man up here. See, he's trying to do it on his own. And, and, and y'all, y'all know what it's like to have a lot of month left over at the end of your money. Some of y'all can get that away home. You, you, you eating wish sandwiches uh, and, and Vienna sausages and potted meat and, 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 and hamburger helper. Uh, and, and see, the struggle can be real. You see him, though. He's supposed to be flossing, but all he got is literally one. And when you and I live our lives in our own strength, and when we live our lives in our own power, and we live our lives with our, trying to do it our own way, it's just not enough of us. We don't have the strength. We don't have the ability, right? We look in all the wrong places, but we've got to get to the place where we are growing as disciples. You see, you, 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 you try, you'll look in a relationship. You'll look in trying to please people. You'll look in, 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 in what you wear and where you go and just trying to get a thing, but the thing will not be enough. See, you have a God-sized void, void in your life, and the only thing that can fill that void is God himself. And the thing is, though, is since we oftentimes only stop at salvation, Jesus washes us, right? He washes us clean, and he, and, 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 and he places us in the Lamb's book of life. But when we fail to go forward, we are called to live clean, right? He wants us to live clean. Now, now let me ask y'all a question. When you go to the restroom and you see somebody, a coworker or whatever, and they they come in and they do their thing, right, and they leave out and they never wash their hands, has that changed the relationship? I mean, let's say, for example, they're like, hey, we're having a potluck on, on, on Friday. And, and, and they, they bring their macaroni and cheese, potato salad, uh, banana pudding. And they're like, Amber brought it or Jeff brought it. And you know that they didn't wash their hands. How many of y'all signing up for that? How many of y'all want some of that smoke? Right? Yeah, you, 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 hey, don't eat that. Don't eat that. Don't eat that. You might slap it out the hand, won't you? I think somebody said they fasting that day. But what about when you're doing stuff and, and before you prepare a food, what do you do with your hands? Right? You wash your hands. Right? And if you are out and about and, and you get stuff on your hands, you're out in the garden, right? The first thing you do when you come in your house is you do what? You wash your hands. But you must understand when your hands are not clean, they contaminate everything you touch. And we've got to get to the place in this life where if our lives are not being cleaned by Jesus, we must recognize that everything we touch will be contaminated. Your marriage will be contaminated if it hasn't been washed by Jesus. If you don't go and wash your words before you speak them, guess what? It's going to be contaminated. When you don't go and do your things godly ways, you're trying to start a business, you're trying to start a relationship. If God hasn't touched it and washed it, guess what? It's going to be contaminated, and 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 nobody's going to want to touch it. But we've got to submit it to Jesus and start living our lives in a way that is clean, in a way that he is handling, right? The thing that you must understand is that Jesus came to give us access to God and all that he has for us. Y'all may recognize those two people up there. Uh, That's my oldest daughter, Karis. But see, back in the day, back in the day when my kids were smaller, I would lift them up and put them on my shoulders. Most dads know this, this thing, right? When they're young and light, we can carry them around. And, and as, as they get older, they, that stops because they're too heavy. But, but understand something. We lift them up and put them on, on our shoulders, and we are giving them access to things that they can never have on their own, right? We give them a better view. Them little legs can't go but so fast, right? So we start to walk them around, and, and they're getting from point A to point B a whole lot faster, 
right? But understand something, that, that they've got to ultimately grow up because they're getting too big, and I can't carry you around everywhere. you got to find God for yourself. And we must understand that even though God has, has died, sent his son to die for us, and Jesus died, right, but he gave us full access to the power of God, to the promises of God, to the purpose of God, but it's going to take some work on our side. We've got work to do. Jesus gave us access, and you and I have got to step into discipleship and start walking our walk, working out our own salvation, and not just waiting for, 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 for this whole uh, for waiting to die. Some of us think that salvation is the end goal. That is just the beginning. Scripture says, for if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more now that we are recognized, shall we be saved by his life. So living his life, following his example, being disciples is what he's calling us to do. Now, the thing is, salvation is not our destination. It's our orientation. In other words, it's a launching point for our growth. It's a launching point for us to begin to to start going forward. And sometimes we focus on uh, salvation, the event. We focus on deliverance, but we lose sight of discipleship. And you must understand that if a person has a demon cast out of them, right, and they don't feel that space, with the word of God, with the truth of God. If they don't fill that space, guess what? The same old sleuth with the guy cast out is going to go on the block, find seven other friends, and guess what? They moving back in. And they're like, oh, it's clean in here. We got room in here. And understand that, they will, that the end state of the man will be worse than the beginning of the man. So we've got to learn how to grow as disciples, church, and understand something that this whole concept of salvation It's not our destination. It is our orientation. It is the starting point for us. And the thing is, see, Jesus rerouted us from a sinful life to a life of Christ living in us and living through us. See, salvation, y'all, and I'm here to take my seat because I know you're getting hungry, right? I know it's about time to eat. But salvation is a process. You're like, what? Wait, wait, wait a minute. Can Can I teach you something for a second? Uh, Can I teach you what the Bible talks about? So salvation is a process. Hopefully you can see that. First of all, there is the point of conversion. When you are converted, when you confess your your faith and trust in Jesus, that's where you are justified. That's where the blood has paid for you, right? You have been blood, you you have been blood bought, right? Uh, And and, and all of the the blood has covered you. That's justification. You, You are now positionally in Christ. The moment you place your faith and trust in Jesus, you are saved. Right. But then there is progressive growth or sanctification. This is where a lot of us miss it. This is where a lot of us fail to launch. We're like, hey, I'm justified. I am good. But there is sanctification or progressive growth. This is what we call discipleship. This is where you are being transformed. This is where you are growing. This is where you are being conformed to the image of Jesus. We should all be growing to be more like Christ. Every, every Chick-fil-A you go to, you get the same chicken, don't you? They call it the Lord's chicken. It's, it's going to be uh, my pleasure. It's going to be thank you. Right? You're getting the same experience. But the church, it's not like that. We don't get the same Jesus wherever we go. Because many of us are not being conformed to be like him. We are just trying to conform him to be like us. And instead of us convincing people about him, we confuse people oftentimes. Because we are not being sanctified. But then there is at the point of death, there is glorification. That's where we go to our eternal reward in Christ. Right? That's where we go to our eternal reward. So the thing that you must understand, there are three phases of this process. There is justification, there is sanctification, and then there is glorification. Right? Justification is what happened in the past. And when Jesus went to the cross, he justified us. When we place our faith and our trust, our sins are placed on the same cross. We are buried with him in his death, and we are raised with him in life. That's theology, y'all. That's Bible, right? That, that, is, that is positionally, we are placed in a position that we are right there alongside Christ. See, I am in Christ. But then there is sanctification, which is an everyday process. The apostle Paul, the writer Of most of the, I mean, two-thirds of the New Testament. He said, I die daily. 
Every single day, parts of me got to die. Every day. He said, I am crucified with Christ. But nevertheless, it's not I who live, but it's Christ who's living inside of me. And we must understand that if we don't walk in this process of sanctification, if we are not taking this word and and spending time in it, and that word spending time on us, we will never be sanctified. We will never be growing. We will continue to get beat up by the same struggles, by the same trials, by the same issues. Why? Because we are not being sanctified. Some of us commit a sin and we're like, oh, Lord, am am I still saved? Some of us mess up, but the Bible lets us know that we cannot lose our salvation. It lets us know in many places that if we, are, if we confess our sins, that he is faithful and just to forgive them. If we understand this whole process of sanctification is a process. In other words, I am being conformed to the image of Christ. But then there's the glorification. That's the future part. That's the promise, y'all. And I can't wait to get there. Y'all, I preach funerals, and yes, I'm sad that, 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 that we lost our loved one. But you know what? I get excited because I'm like, man, they're going to the, to the good stuff. Ain't no more bills than glory. <laughs> I, I, ain't, ain't no more pain and suffering than glory. I went running yesterday. I ran a 10K, and I, per, parts of my body started hurting that hadn't hurt in a while. And I'm like, Lord, when I get to glory, it ain't no more pain. Ain't no more tears, right? But this glorification is permanent. And guess what? Ain't no thief that can steal it. It, it, It's it's not one of them things where if you go outside and you park your car outside, you leave your door unlocked, and you go out next day, you might not have stuff in your car. But salvation ain't like that. You see, once your name is written, there is no man who can take it. Once your name is written, guess what? It is stamped for eternity. And and, and the Bible says that, that that a thief can't steal it, right? It says it don't decay. It is reserved in heaven for you. That's eternal glorification. So so what do we got here? We got justification, sanctification, and glorification. And we want to focus on our sanctification process. So the thing about it is, and I'm I'm, I'm done, y'all. The king is here. So what are you doing with this? The king is here, y'all. Some people were just cheering for him. Just, you know, yeah, Jesus, this is awesome. So, some people were looking and like, oh, is he the one that's going to deliver us? But there were some people who said, no, this is the Messiah. This is the one that changes everything. He is the one that's the answer to everything I'm looking for. This is Jesus. So the question for us today is are we just going to be a part of the crowd? Or are we going to do something with the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Don't just go through the motions, y'all. God didn't call us here to come and sit and waste our time, but it is about a direct personal relationship with Jesus. He wasn't about religion. He was about relationship. So don't just be in the crowd. Today is a day to get connected. Today is a day to be committed. So what are you doing with Jesus? Don't just settle for the moments where you understand he died for you. He bled for you. Yes, we are thankful for that because without that, there is no us. But there is more that he wants you to have access to. He wants you to be conformed to the image of Christ. Little versions of him walking around in in the public schools. Little versions of him walking around on your job. Little versions of him impacting people's lives so that men and women will know that he is real. Because we are here for that purpose. God wants to transform, change, and transition your life to be more and more like Jesus. But the only way to do that is to enter into a process of true discipleship and following Christ. Every head's bowed, every eye's closed. We're stopping right here. The king is here. The king is here. And he's, 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 he's here. And guess what? If, uh, this is the thing I love. Today is Communion Sunday. We must understand that if Jesus, if you were the only one that placed your faith and trust with, in Jesus, he still would have came. Think about that for a minute. If everybody rejected Jesus, but only one, I believe he still would have came. Maybe you find yourself distracted, discouraged. Maybe you find yourself where you just want Jesus to get you out of something. But maybe this message has spoken to your heart and you're looking and saying, yep, I don't really know him personally. 
Maybe you only know him as Savior, but you don't know him as Lord. Maybe he's not the one calling your shots, ordering your steps, guiding your words. And you feel him calling you to a personal relationship. Every head's bowed, every eye's closed. We're just looking at him. This is a personal moment. Maybe that's you. You're saying, Pastor, I, I, I want to have a closer one-on-one relationship with Jesus. And I'm ready to take that next step. I, I, I want to take that next step. But you know what? I need some prayer. Pastor, would you pray for me? If that's you, I want you to just slip your hand up right where you are. I want to pray uh, in this moment. You're looking to the Lord for a more personal relationship. Thank you for your honesty. Guess what? He sees you. He says, when you draw near to me, I'm drawing near to you. I want you to understand something. Jesus gave you access. And as you begin to grow as a disciple, he's going to transform some ways you think. He's going to heal some past hurts. He's going to challenge you in some areas. And some of them are going to scare you. But I want you to understand that he's right there with you. He's giving you the word. He's giving you his spirit. He's giving you the church. He has set you up to win. God's rooting for you, and so am I. And I want to pray with you real quick. Father, thank you for those who have expressed honesty and a desire to go to a deeper level in Jesus, who want to be sanctified truly, who want to get deeper into knowing you, Thank you for their honesty. God, I pray that you would deliver them from every attack that has come against their life. Help them to see that even though the enemy has thrown things at them, in your sovereignty, you're going to use the things thrown at them to build their testimony. So I pray today, God, that our focus and our faith is on you alone. God, we are looking to you to fill us with your Holy Spirit. We are looking to you to draw us closer to you. We are looking to you. You said you are the author and the finisher of our faith. God, I pray for those who have raised their hands and are saying, I want to be closer to Jesus. God, I pray, Lord God, that the things that used to distract them, that their appetite for those things will start to die off. They would recognize that we've got to starve the flesh. We've got to crucify the flesh. And the times they want to tell somebody off, help them to crucify that flesh. The times they want to complain, help them to crucify that flesh. The times they want to just lay in the bed and not uh, come to church, help them to crucify that flesh. The time where everything wants to come up to keep them away from the saints, to keep them away from your presence, God, help us to crucify the flesh. And Lord, fill us with the true promises of God and transform us to be more and more like you. Father, you sent your son Jesus to die in our place. We thank you for that. Help us, God, to walk in newness of life. Lord, as we march towards this resurrection, we thank you that the blood was shed, that the price was paid. God, help us to live clean for your glory. Father, thank you for this word. Thank you for those who have heard it. And we pray, God, that we will go forward and live the life you want us to live. God, you're calling us to be disciples. You're calling us to go all in for you. You're calling us to be salt and light. Help us to answer that call for your glory. Father, this is our prayer. We honor you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. I I pray you got something out of today's message. I also, uh, really quickly, if you have a special prayer request, we want to make sure we have we make time for that. Uh, If you do have a prayer request, you can see me. Um, I know Shauna can also pray with you. Just see me right at the end of church. I want to make sure there is space and time for that. If you made a decision for Jesus today, if you don't know him as your Lord and Savior, I want you to come see me as well. We want to get resources in your hand. We want to help you to grow as a disciple of Christ as you walk in towards this journey. And if you have any questions, you're confused about anything, come see me at the end of service. I want to be here to, uh, to, to be a blessing to you. I want to be here to answer questions, to lead you towards that next step in your discipleship. Um, we are going to get ready to transition to communion time. Um, I pray you got something out of the message. Did y'all get anything today?
Amen. You see, I don't like to just preach just to be preaching because it's resurrection time. I want you to get something out of it. Amen. Something you can take home with you. Uh, but we, we are going to get ready to shift into uh, communion. Um, hopefully everyone has your elements. If you do not, just raise your hand. We will get them over to you. We've got the uh, communion uh, elements coming around. Um, I'm going to pull the scriptures up here as we're getting situated. While we are doing that, um, if you made a commitment uh, to, to join the church uh, and want to become a member, we actually are going to have new members class today right after service. Uh, right after we eat, we will have new members class today. If you have made a commitment or want to make a commitment, grab one of these uh, green cards. Just check on the box. I want to be a member of BVCC. We will get you plugged in. We do have new members class going on today, um, and we, we will get you situated with that. So, again, grab one of those, fill it out, bring it up to me at the end of service. We will get you enrolled in our next session of uh, actually discipleship class. We are renaming it. We're not calling it new members class no more because we're not making members. We're making disciples. Amen. So it is disciples class. So uh, we will get you plugged in. Also, if you have a prayer request, you can grab one of these blue cards. It just says pray for me. Drop it off in the, in the box in the back or bring it up here. We have a prayer team that will pray for you diligently and continually uh, through that process. We want to let you know that there are prayer warriors interceding on your behalf. Um, has everyone been served? Everyone have their elements at this point? All right, cool. We're going to go ahead and jump into communion, and then we are going to uh, uh, take the offering, and be dismissed, and go eat some food. All right, so here's what we have. And we're not going to rush past this. Uh, we're moving quickly, but we are not going to rush past communion. Communion is important. It's not just something that we do because they said to do it on first, we said to do it on first Sunday. But it's a time to examine ourselves, to look at where we are in our faith, and to really connect and to recommit to Jesus. So I want to read the scriptures for you. Um, They say this in verse 27. It says, Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and the blood of the Lord. You read that and you say, well, I guess that's me. I know when I read it, like, yeah, that's me. I guess I'm not taking no communion. But then it says, let a person examine himself. Then, and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. Okay, cool. I got some hope. Maybe I can get in there, right? Uh, But understand something. Our focus in communion is that we examine ourselves. Right? It's not that we look and we're checking and keeping score and saying, yep, you're good. You passed it. You take communion. No, it is a time where we examine ourselves in the areas that the Holy Spirit reveals to us. We repent of those areas and we make a commitment to say, Jesus, I am reconnecting. Does that make sense? So we're going to take a few minutes and examine ourselves and then we're going to eat the bread and we are going to drink of the cup. So wherever you are, as the music begins to play, take a minute. Examine your life. Look at where you are with Christ. Every head's bowed, every eye's closed. We are looking at the things that have come out of our mouths. Have they lined up with Jesus? The thoughts in our hearts, have they lined up with Jesus? Have we been living for ourselves or living for him? Have we placed our religion above our relationship? Jesus is the mirror. Hmm. Let's examine ourselves. Father, having examined our lives, your Holy Spirit is revealing areas that you want us to give to you. Sometimes we give it, and then we go right back and we take it back. Lord, let the words of our mouths and the meditations of our heart, let them be acceptable in your sight. Creating us a clean heart, renewing us a right spirit. We confess our sins. And believe that you are faithful and just to forgive them and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We stand on the promise today that says that you will separate us from our sins as far as the east is from the west. We stand knowing, God, that even though our sins are red like scarlet, but you said you would wash us whiter than snow. 
God, all of these promises we believe to be true. We thank you that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. We put our confidence in you. We praise you. We give you glory. We love you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. He says, for anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body, eats and drinks judgment on himself. We, exam we have examined ourselves. We have discerned the body. We realize that this is not just a box we check. Right? And now we're going to partake of the Lord's Supper. And we're going to fellowship together and celebrate the victory that he has already won. It says, for I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed, he took bread. When, we had, when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's take of the body together that was broken on our behalf. And then it says, in the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's drink of the cup together. And then the scriptures say for us, often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's pray. God, we proclaim your death, knowing that you are coming. We look forward to that return. We long for it. We say, Maranatha, come, Lord Jesus. Father, God, help us to long, and anticipate, long for and anticipate your coming. But as we anticipate it, I pray, Father God, that we wouldn't just sit around idle, but that we would do the work of the kingdom. And we would be your disciples and walk this walk. We thank you that you have cleansed us. We thank you that by your stripes we are here. We thank you for every promise being yes and amen. Lord God, we seal this time. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen, amen, amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. So we're going to, last thing, we're going to take up an offering. We'll have the benediction. I will bless the food. Uh, but we want to encourage you to give as the Lord has placed on your heart. The Bible says that God loves a cheerful giver, right? So our information is up here. Uh, you can text your giving amount using the number on the screen. Also, our church website is there. And if you're old school, you can give in the box in the back. Erica, give us the handy wave. Amen. The nice parade wave. Erica's got the box right beside her. Uh, but if you want to um, give uh, using the envelopes, that, inf that is in the back as well. But I want to thank you in advance for your giving, right, because through that giving, God is not only blessing us, but he is in turn blessing you. Right, because you give, right? The lights are on, but because you give, we're able to go and put Sweet Frog out in the, out in the parking lot and bless people. Because you give, we're able to do blessings bags. Because you give, right? That's the work of the kingdom. God's house does not lack. We thank God for your giving. So give as the Lord has placed on your heart. And we are believing him to not only uh, meet every need, but also to in turn bless the seed that you sow. Amen. So we're going to pray and have the benediction. And I'm also going to bless the...